Right guys, it's going to be a 1080 Master Nightfall solo, getting the Platinum rank without the use of any Hive Raid mods on a Titan. For those who just want to see this, then skip to the time on the screen. For SP, I can quickly show you what I'm using, as that's really important for everyone like this, and modifiers and stuff. So, modifiers are pretty basic on the Master Nightfall, but um, just be aware of them, like things like Empath, okay? This matters now because we haven't got high barrier on, right? Big deal. So we have enhanced radar, take increased damage from melee. We don't have a radar because chaff is on, right? But the big thing is take increased damage from melee. A knight can get you literally nearly one shot, okay? One melee, one shot. A bunch of thrall can wipe you. So be aware of that. Then we got champions unstoppable and anti barrier, equipment locked, match game. Match game doesn't matter, you just need to have arc, all arc. There's two solar shields, well technically there's three solar shields, okay? There's only two solar shields that you'll be dealing with and they don't work. So you can just run all arc. Like I said, chaff is on, champions mob always on. This mod here is very threatening without raid mods because the boss just does a lot of damage, okay? Um, very dangerous, so we have to be aware of that and empath. Like I said, we're on a Titan. We've done the Warlock run, we've done the Hunter run, we're on a Titan. Titan runs a sort after, because there's not much solo going on for this class at the minute. And also, um, people always ask, I want to do it without raid mods. I want to do it. Just know that before you start wanting to do it without raid mods, your solo is going to be twice as hard as what it would be without raid mods. Okay? So just know that's fine if you want to start doing it without raid mods and you haven't got the raid mods. Just know that your run's going to be twice as hard. So, we're on Striker Titan, top tree, Pulse Grenade, and Rally Barricade. I could have went Towering. Towering would be the safer option. But I had Rally on. As for weapons, we're using the Exotic Grey Launcher with a hard, a Arc or Rifle Euro's Gift with Disruption Break on. Which, what Disruption Break does is when we break any shield, including anti barrier shields, um, we get a buff to our kinetic damage. Okay? That buffs all weapons in the kinetic slot. This is really good with River Hard, right? On champions, which you'll see in the run. Then we're using a exo uh, not an exotic, but a arc linear fusion rifle. If you have one to go use it, you can blind knights really good. If you don't have it, I suggest using something like this. If you don't have line in the sand, because line in the sand is a rare linear fusion, I get it, then just pick up this. Okay. This will just this will do the job. You will maybe need to infuse it to 1060 though, right? These are your only arc linears in the game. This is blue. You don't need that. So you have this or this. So you don't have that. You tranche it. If you don't have that, use anything arc that you like, right? But a linear is really good in it. As far as our armor, so we had ins insurmountable skull fort. So every arc melee kill we get we get our melee back and we also get pulse nade energy right we're obviously using pulse nade um other things that we had on our armor so we had a arc i'll talk about resistance mods first right so we had an arc damage resistance mod on because there's a lot of boomerites i put that on for for the starters uh, we had a recovery mod on there i mean recovery's not very good but the more recovery the better for this but you are getting health back off your um, skull fart kills though. Um, we had a boss resist mod on and a concussive dampener. So boss resist works on champions and obviously the boss itself. I recommend having at least one, maybe two if you want. Maybe put two boss resists on. Because uh, like I say, you haven't got high barrier. right? And then we've got a concussive dampener. So this does not work on direct hits. Just to, just to state what it says, right? Reduces incoming area of effect. So if a boomer hits splash damage on you, right? And you're in cover, or the boss hits splash damage on you, so the shot doesn't directly hit you, but it hits you around the corner, then this is going to work and help. As for other perks we had, so like I said, no rare mods are allowed. We had a enhanced grade launcher. Put that on because we've had our main use of damage really um so buffing that i mean 
it's got auto load and holster in it. It's just handy if you want to reload it quickly and uh, do more damage with it. So still handy to have it on. Then we had a counter charge high energy fire build going. Um, so every time we stun a champion, we get high energy fighter proc, which is a 20% damage buff. We don't have oppressive darkness, so this is highly recommended. It's a season of dawn mods, which the gunsmith does sell. He rotates if you went around in that season. Uh, we had traction on, grey launcher reserves and scavenger just so that we can with a hard all the time. We also had double special ammo finder on which you'll see that works and we're getting ammo all the time. I'm never running out with a hard because of that. Traction because we're running around, shoulder charging enemies, really handy. We also on the uh, cloak had recuperation, every time we pick an orb we get health instant. Enhanced ashes to assets which gives us increased super. Energy on grenade kills, just what I had on. We also had taken charge and shield break charge. So we have multiple ways to get charge with likes. That's the main gimmick around this build. And that was the setup. So I'm going to run straight away. We'll summon our sparrow to the cave area. We'll generally get a loading screen here, just a couple of seconds. Not so bad. Hopefully, we see the end of this loading screen though with next gen. I hope so. So with this first section, we're going to have a couple of acolytes surrounding a arc shielded knight. You want to take the knight as quickly as you can. Uh, if you let the knight back up, the knight will um, go to where the first hunter bar is. So make sure you clear those ads pretty quickly, which isn't so hard to do. Then with the first champion, you want to the way you want to deal with this is. Get a Wither Horde shot first to bear out a shield, which you should have your rifle at the ready for that. Then we can get our next stun. <clears throat> Try and get body shots if you can with Wither Horde. Wither Horde does more tick damage on a body shot than it does um, where the shot's just on the, on the floor, right? Also, we've got Charge with Light. So what we're going to do here is bait the ogre to go around the map, as you saw, and then we're going to go to this uh, cave area. If you're going to try and kill this unsortable without any unsortable mod, then this is this is a strat that you need to do. Try not to clear any adds with your weapons. You can kill adds with your nades or abilities. That's fine. You will keep charge of light. However, if you kill an ad with your weapon you'll lose it you don't want to lose charge of light because charge of light you'll get a 20 percent damage buff meaning that we can actually just kill this unstoppable like so with no unstoppable mod all you need to do is just keep creeping in and out doing with a hard shots like so and eventually the unstoppable will die doesn't take that uh, many shots either also would explain with charge of light as you saw, I didn't have any like supercharged mods or stacks on stacks. So you should only get one stack charge of light. But for whatever reason, we get you can get times two. Right? You can't get more than times two though, without having the correct mods on. So getting times two means that you can kill the anti barrier, and that goes from times two to times one, and then keep times one for the unstoppable. The next room. You want to clear the acolytes in front of you, two or three, and then what you want to do after that is take any snipers you can see. For me, I only seen one. There's usually three snipers, but they're hiding. Um, if you're using a linear, this is the beauty of the linear. The linear is not per se for damage. It's mainly for bursting an arc knight down from range if needed for emergencies. And it's for clearing out adds as well this rock here has decent cover but not the best and one I'm weak you need to pay attention to your health that's the biggest thing with this um, when you're not running a high barrier also when the Knights do their shield that is a good time to um, do any heavy shots you might want to do or with a hard if the Knight is far away um, then you want to be using the linear. If you've got the knight close, then we've a hard. 
Uh, especially that we've got disruption break on aerials, <clears throat> we can take advantage of that. Uh, which you can farm this auto rifle, I believe, from the gunsmith. Um, it's also a well drop. Always check every li every aerials you get. Always check them because it's actually a good auto rifle for uh, shields this season. Now there's a couple of snipers left up, so we can take them with a nade or what have you. I'm going to try and get a shield break with Uriel's first. There's two ways of doing this. You can either get your shield break first so that the knight stuns to then use Weaverhood. Or um, get a Weaverhood shot before the arc shield's taken. Then take down the arc shield. Then do another Weaverhood shot. That's that section dealt with. We're going to have a couple of ads which can be skipped. Um, obviously, it's going to be platinum, so we're not going to be skipping any champions. We're not skipping these ads here. The reason being is for ammo. We don't have special finisher on. If you want to do that, then do that. Um, but I am a person that likes to use my super, so um, I prefer having double special ammo finder on. I still never run out of ammo, and I use with a hard a lot. So, um, it's up to you, whatever your playstyle is, if you don't, I mean, the super's not that useful, but the, the useful thing about it is damage resistance, right? Yeah, so we haven't got high barrier. If we're in a panic mode, right, we should never really be in a panic mode, but if you are, then your super can be something that you can survive from. We're going to use a super here because um, we have no use for it in the next part, really. Then we're going to jump onto this rock and deal with this set of anti-barriers. We're going to get a river hard shot first to bait out the first shield. We'll get the stun, which takes around 15, 16 shots, something like that. With Uriels, depending on how close you are, and it also depends where you've got charge of light. Like if I've, I've got charge of light now, you'll see the shield will go down quicker. We'll be dealing with this, these uh, anti-barriers the same every time. Um, we're not using heavy on the uh, champions because Weaverhard deals with it. We're always getting ammo for Weaverhard. But our heavy, we're not. We didn't use, like I said, any rare mods. So we can't get ammo back off that. But we could have utilized heavy finisher. right? But like I said before, I liked, I'm a person that likes to use my super. So... I'm not going to do that. But if if you wanted to, you could run, you could run every finisher, and that would work as well. Okay, so once one or two knights are killed, try and try to proc charge of light, okay? i.e. that you've got charge of light to use on the next unstoppable. This is the last unstoppable we have to deal with. After this, no more. So it's really good. Uh, you don't want to be killing any acolytes, no knights at this point. Your only focus is the unstoppable, and you need to bait the unstoppable to a safe location so that you can use with a hard to take out the unstoppable. Right? The so back here to the cliff area is where you'll need to go. Now we're just baiting the ogre out. And we do a whip, one with a hard shot, and then we go back to the cliff area. Weaverhard will track where the ogre is. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. Uh, when it when it's taking tick damage, of course. Of course, if you're somebody that has anarchy, right, use it in this nightfall. It's going to work really well. But if you don't have anarchy, then this is your next best thing, right? It basically does what anarchy does, but it doesn't have as much damage, of course. It's important as well you only do one shot at a time. Uh, if you start trying to, you know, get a shot, reload, then get another shot, you're gonna the yoga's gonna come over and then stomp you, which will be a one shot. Yes, I am 1084 light, but that doesn't matter. I'm actually 1080 light in this thing, in this nightfall. I don't get really any benefits for being higher of a light. Try to stay in cover when you get your final shot on the ogre as well, as he nearly melted me down there. 
Um, but we're coming back here for the ads that we cleared earlier for some with a hard ammo. <clears throat> so again, that's why I killed them so that I could go back because I knew I'd be using a ton of Weaver Horde on the Unstartable. We've got another brick there as well if we need it. So that, That's what you need to do is uh, manage your ammo way more. If you're not using Special Finisher, you're not using Heavy Finisher or Armaments, you need to be leaving bricks on the floor uh, that you can go back and get later if needed. Just keep an eye on where you're getting your ammo drops. Okay, so now we're going to clear out the two acolytes next to that stone. That brings the anti-barriers out of the way. It's part of the AI to do that. And then we can freely take out <coughs> the remaining actually knights. If we'd used a super on these earlier, which we could have done, but I used my super before that. That's another way of doing it. Just know that if you're going to do that, make sure you get charged with light. Yeah. That's why I didn't do it, because uh, having the charge of light means I can kill the unstoppable quicker. Okay, so this location is good for this set of anti-barriers. Uh, we're just going to take the one that's on the left side, right? So this one happens to have rolled to the left. So we'll take this one. The right side knight did hit us a little bit, but we backed up. Again, there's different ways of doing this. You can do with a hard shots like one or two left and right of the knight. So whichever way he rolls, he has no choice but just to stand in that pool. Or if you can get the body shot, get the body shot. Right? But either or will work. If you're low on ammo, uh, there's going to be Thrall spawning. Then farm the Thrall. You mean you can do shoulder charges and stuff. Farm with pulse nade energy and all sorts. But I'm full on ammo so I don't need it. I've saved a super for this room, uh, which I recommend doing it, because this room is deceptive. It doesn't look so bad, but then uh, when you try, when you start trying to take out the champion and stuff, uh, acolytes will throw nades at you. So, to avoid the risk, because that's what this is all about, avoiding risk, this whole run, um, it's just to use a super, clear out the adds, the knight at the back, because the knight will usually spam you. Now we can't, of course, and then we can just take out all acolytes, and then we can deal with the champion. Always make sure we're getting a reload as well. I usually do like a wither horde, then a reload, and then wait for the next shield, or melt them down, depending. That If you do it like that, you'll never miss a shield break. Now on to the yoga room. Okay, so um, there's a couple of tips with this room. Well, there's a lot of tips, um, but this room can be hectic. Depending on how you play it, the wizard, the wanted target, you want the wizard to rotate and it's on a timer. Okay? You can do di additional damage to the wanted target to push the wizard away, but it's solar shield, right? Um, just let the wizard rotate. You don't. It's just a headache. Yeah. What we're doing here is we're standing so far back in this room that none of the ads engage. They work on a meter distance. Yeah. A lot of the ads do that. So this means the ogre will not shoot at us, meaning we can get pot shots, a couple of the acolytes that are dangerous. Yeah. The shrieker will open up like so when you get close enough. Um, and also when the Shrieker opens up, it spawns in two Archdaily Knights, the Knights that drop the relics, and a bunch of Acolytes with the Knights. And those Acolytes, there'll be some with one one of the Knights, and then some with another, right? And generally one of the Archdaily Knights will be where the Shrieker is, and then the other one's at the back side of the map. So we're just kind of waiting it out. Seeing if we can get any shots on any of the yards. It's not worth trying to take uh, the arc shield on this knight from this distance. Unless I use a linear and whatnot like so. But even still, the knight's just going to back up. That's part of the AI of these knights. When 
a shield is broken, they want to go to cover. Okay? It's just natural for them to want to do that. So you leave the night. <clears throat> on this strat, on the setup that we've got, um, we want to take the night closer. We don't want to use too much heavy. We're also going to take the second trigger, which you can take with either your linear or wither hard, whichever you prefer. It's also important we take out these orange bar acolytes. They, the orange bars stick in middle, generally, where the ogre is. So they're kind of hard to take out, but if you get any safe opportunity to do so, do it. Because the ogre, right, uh, is threatening. So if you get maybe hit by the ogre and the nade at the same time, that's a death. Not only that, if you get a knight pushing you like so, uh, and a solar nade is uh, through at you, that's another wipe. Uh, I wanted to back off here, didn't like, I didn't like uh, sort of how the knight was pushing me, so we backed up. Also staying close to the area, so you've got to know your environment in this room, because the ogre can melt pretty quick. So if you're going to expose yourself, make sure you get the cover quick like so. Right? Don't let the ogre see you for any length of time at all. So I'm going to get one shield, uh, one relic throw. Try not to get any more than that though. At that point, we want to accumulate three relics. So basically, there's the cliff side of the room, which I'm just passing now, and then there's the knee side. The cliff side, usually two knights spawn there, right? Or oh, we've all seen it on the strike. This doesn't happen if you clear all knights from this side, which is entirely possible because of the mechanics of this nightfall. You can cl the knights just keep spawning, right? So we'll just take them from the easier side. The easy way of doing it, so we'll do it. The easier way. Uh, every time you get chance to pick a relic, do that. Because, like I say, the ogre know exactly what you're doing when you're, back, when you're passing through and whatnot. And we're just going to accumulate all the relics behind us. There's four crystals to uh, be took down. We've already took one, so we just need three. Like I said, we're going to use mainly Uriels and Wiverhorde to take these knights. We're trying to save on heavy, I mean, you know, I'm not getting many drops either. Uh, and the Weaver Horde does more damage anyways than the line in the sand, generally. Like, it's total damage. There's two pillars you can sort of stand near. I, w I didn't realise the knight had already come out. I was actually waiting for the knight to spawn in, but I was fine. We had a barricade. Um, worked out. Okay, so we'll pick up our final relic, and then we're going to um, take down all three crystals. Okay, just be cautious of where the ogre is. If you're going to jump over that sort of mountain th area, just make sure that he can't see much of you. Once we've took down all relics, the game takes a long time to catch up with the shield, because we're not meant to be doing it like this. But we're going to use double pulse grenade because we don't really need that. We'll do a couple of weaver hard shots. That will get your ogre weak and then use the super. Just be aware when the ogre is killed, all adds despawn, but they do stay up for a while. And if I wasn't in a super right now, I would be dead. But that's why we do the super. Like I said, it's not always about what the super does. It's just the flat damage resistance we get off it sometimes. That's why I don't like running special finisher, stuff like that. Because it's just, it's just like, it's just part of the, you know, you've got your guns, your abilities. I don't want to be sacrificing ability when I could just put double special ammo on my helmet and I get the same results without having to use special. Special finisher is good and all. It's better maybe in teams because, you, you know, you're generating special ammo for everyone else. But on a solo, you really don't need it. Depends on the weapon as well, because Wither Horde has a lot of ammo in it, so it's not needed. 23 bullets, plus his reserves, plus I've got Scavenger. Now with the four anti barrier champions, <clears throat> so up this location here, up the hill, basically the boomers cannot hit us from here, right? Uh, or they are limited to hit us. They may, we may get splash damage, but that's where Conclusive Dampener comes in. The main goal here is to take down the first knight. When there's four knights up, you're at risk of dying, of course, right? 
uh, if you're not standing in the right spot or something. So, we want to melt that first anti-barrier down as, as quickly as we can. But like I said, up here it's pretty consistent. When we get one knight though, down, the other three push up. They won't push up until one of the knights is down. They, it's pretty consistent. I've done this nightfall a lot, like over the last, this season in general. It's been, I think it's the third time it's been up. I'm doing it every time and the knights always behave in the same way, generally. Sometimes the knight will push up a little closer. That happens, just just um, back back off like so, down the hill. <clears throat> now we're just trying to get a wither hard shot on this knight. They can be annoying at times when they side roll out of your shots and stuff. Like I say, you can always wither hard the floor. Like left and right of the knight and then he has nowhere to go at that point. So, for damage, DPS, there's no crazy strats for this, but for this first phase, we are going to um, come to the location right here because the, it stops the boss from spawning in extra ads. We don't want the extra a headache of having ads up, right? If I was standing anywhere on, else on the map, the boss would do his AI move and spawn in a bunch of ads. He doesn't do it when we do that. Therefore, we can get free damage on him and, and get the damage done and over with. <clears throat> because he's time gate, because he's um, gated with his HP all the time, right? It's not worth optimizing too much with damage. I do end up using charge of light and stuff, which I did have charge of light there, so it just made the damage a little quicker. Um, you can optimize it a little bit with the knights because we've got shield break charge on. We've also got taken charge on, but. The shield break charge is probably more important. That and counter charge. <clears throat> the boss isn't going to be threatening at all, just be immune at the minute. That's fine, we were waiting on this uh, knight right here. Can use a super. Not the best, I admit. Like the super on knights and stuff, but... It takes out a knight safely and we're not going to be at risk of dying as long as our health's not like really low. <clears throat> it's where Skull Fort will come in on this fight. I haven't used it that much, um, but we're going to use it a lot here. Since we're going to get our health back, it's something that, that's needed. Not only that, Weaver Horde has the ability of like killing a lot of Ive and snipers that hide behind these rocks. Yeah. Uh, if we can do a Weaver Horde next to a rock, which you seem to do often, it's, it'll spawn kill them all. So it's really good that way. I don't have to put myself in danger so much. On this first phase, we don't need to worry about the boss at all. Like, like you see, the boss is just standing there. So pretty easy the first phase. We've got Charge of Light as well. I, I farmed that off a knight, their Arc Shield, to get the times two when they were killed. I was left with times one. I ended up losing it, but I had to do a Weaver Horde there anyways. Like I said, we're not optimizing for damage. It's all about just surviving and getting through it. Now we're going to use this rock here and just keep jumping up and down, like so. It relatively keeps the boss in the same location, meaning we can easily Weaver Horde and get the damage over. There's also a sniper up top. He's a little heavy there. We don't use much heavy because, like I say, I'm not getting many drops. Since I haven't got the finest on for that. Now we've got wizard phase, which I was a little late with. Um, try to melt that wizard as soon as the exit came out. We've, this is where we've hard isn't so good for the uh, wizard, so it probably would have been better just spamming my linear. Because match game's not on for these wizards. So one or two shots, two or three shots would have took down the wizard with uh, the linear. Because what, what happens is when two wizards are up, both of them fight you, right? But when one's killed, the other wizard backs up and hides. And then you save all you have is Thrall, which they can be shoulder charged. They do do a lot of damage because of Empath. But of course, if, as long as you're using, you know, Weaver Hard for the ad clear or both of, then you're safe with them. 
Well, we're going to take the wizard from over here, so we're not getting attacked. Because right now the boss is attacking us. So the, the phase of the boss has changed now. We're going to spawn kill this knight as well. Go. That relic's dangerous to pick up. If a relic is in middle like that, and there's a knight... Uh, and the boss is shooting at you, that's a risk of picking that relic up. So I would advise taking your knight first. Then going for the relic. Obviously we're going to have the boss resist kick in. The boss does hit us to help out, but it's not going to... We're talking percents, it's not going to be... Like high barrier or something, right? So we need to optimise it. I'm bound up another charge of light off this night. Get my times two. It's perfect when they do their wall. It's perfect because they're just free to be hit at, after that wall. And we can shoot through that wall with an eye barrier. So we never approach a relic in middle unless we're full health. To be sip. Just wait for full health regen before you do this phase, for sure. We'll do a Weaver Horde shot on the boss and a nade on the snipers. Just because, you know, they, we don't want them up for too long. Boss will, like I say, spawn in extra adds at times. Usually just a couple of Vacolites and Thrall. Now we're going to go back to our rock, DPS. Like I said, there's no need to use heavy. Weaver Horde will do most of the work. We've got plenty of shots though. Definitely important to have, the more armor you've got for the later phase of the fight, the better. You want plenty of Weaver Horde, for sure, which that's where the double ammo finders are coming in. All right, and, a, and a good a bit of heavy as well. For those uh, moments where you need a bag up. What we're, do, what we're doing right here is we're controlling this area by Weaver Horde on each side of this rock. And basically, the boss would usually come round this rock and attack you. But Weaver Horde stops the boss from pushing you. Right? This means that we can just keep sort of hang around this area and with a horde on each side all the thrall will just die in it. Sometimes some get through like so so and we're low on HP we can get our shoulder charge for help. But this is the, probably the best part for me on, on this area of the map. We're going to keep doing this until the we're not going to stop doing this until Thrall stop, really. Um, there'll be an Acolyte hide, a couple of Acolytes hiding be behind those two rocks there. Which we can do a couple of Weaver Horde shots to hopefully get them. we now got another spawn in, which got me weak, so I'm trying to do super. Not only that, we have Knights spawning in anyways, so... Trying to put as much damage as we can into that knight, but that was fine. That's where the linear will end up coming in, anyways. The super was just to survive that engagement mainly. Now we're going to do rotation. And then hide behind each rock for each part of the map. There was only one thrall I left up, which I should have actually took out, because it was sort of interfering with the damage. Always be aware of where the boss is as well, that's very important. And then we're going to deal with the uh, last night. The last actually night at least. 
Also, if you just do a wall like that, you can do with a horde and stuff. Just make sure you avoid all the shots from the boss as well. Be careful on this phase as well, because the game spawns in extra knights, or can do, um, when you're picking up uh, orbs. There's usually an audio cue for it, so make sure you listen out for that. If there is, be careful on how you pick up these relics, because it's actually dangerous. Like, for right now, for example, I'm less than half, and there's an actual knight spawning. So we're waiting for the health ridge, and this is where recovery would help out. <clears throat> if I had more recovery, it would be even better, right? But, you want boss resist as well, and concussive dampness, so... We've got our final relic, we're also charged with light, notice. This is going to be our last phase of damage, we'll do it round about here. We've got double pulse, so we'll use that. Pull with hard shots, and then linear. Always keep an eye on our health as well, and then that will finish that. So that was the solo 1080 Master Nightfall Platinum on a Titan with no raid mods. I don't generally do these runs because um, it's making it harder for people generally. And if someone's new to solo, right? Advise them to do it without raid mod isn't always the best. The best advice is no, go and do Menagerie, go and do Last Wish, go and do such and such, right? To get your raid mod. Other than that, that was the run. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you.